not How's it going? Okay. So I don't think many people are gonna be joining because when I scheduled this tutorial like a month ago, beginning of, of uh, the six weeks. I didn't know this was gonna be Super Bowl weekend, so I guess we can go and get started. I don't have any problems to do anyway because the quiz tomorrow is pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing really tricky about it. Okay. And can you all see uh, my screen? Just give me a thumbs up if you can or can't. Good, all right. So give me a quick second, we'll go and get started. I um, only have like six problems to do because that pretty much encompasses the whole quiz. We'll have Tuesday, let me just pull up the key for the homework so I know that I got the right answer. All right. Let's get started. So I'm starting with number six on the homework. Uh, 10 x over x squared minus 36 plus five all over x minus 10. So first thing I'll do 
if you want to have the bottom facts out, and my rule of thumb is to always have your denominators in the form, you know, x minus some number. I don't. I, I would never really want it in this form of a it's like six minus x, or I would never want it in the form of a minus x or anything like that. I wouldn't want it that way. So I'm going to change that first. So that 10x over x squared minus 36, I can change that to 10x all over x minus 6, x plus 6. At the same time, this 5 over 6 minus x, I can rewrite that by factoring out a negative in the bottom. When I factor out that negative in the bottom, I get a negative, which I'll put on the side. And that 5 all over, this becomes x minus 6. Everyone with me? So that 6 minus x, I'm going to change it to a negative of x minus 6. And the x squared minus 36, I'm going to factor that out. And that's what I get. My LCD, I can see is going to be x minus 6 times x plus 6. So that 5 over x minus 6, all I need to do is multiply the top and bottom by x plus 6. And when I do, the left one isn't going to change. But the right one, when I distribute this 5 in, I get 5x plus 30 all over x minus 6, x plus 6. All right. And then from here, I want to combine both numerators. So I want to combine this into one fraction to be able to reduce it. So what I get is 10x. And remember, when you're subtracting two fractions, what you're doing is you're subtracting the whole numerator. So what I really have is 10x minus 5x minus 30. Because you need to distribute this negative in. So 10x minus 5x minus 30 all over x minus 6 and x plus 6. We'll add some like terms, and I end up getting 5x minus 30 over that LCD, which we can factor out a 5 out of, and that lets me cancel out like terms on top and bottom. Or even before that, I guess, before we cancel out like term, uh, let's go ahead and figure out our excluded values. And if I look at my excluded values, that's going to be any time uh, some value make a, any denominator in the whole problem equal to zero. And, and the only ones I see here will be this x minus 6 and x plus 6. So x cannot equal plus or minus 6. So I just want to get the excluded values out of the way before I start canceling stuff out. But anyway, back to, to simplifying this problem, the x minus 6 is cancel out. And what I'm left with is 5 all over x plus 6. And that's your answer. Any questions about that? Makes sense. All right. They keep going. So now I have five minus x, uh, six x squared minus nine x plus three all over x squared minus x. So like I said before, first thing I always want to do is kind of factor everything else. So the left one is just the five. There's nothing really to factor there. I can just I can write that as like five over one doesn't really matter, but this right one I can factor the top, uh, the top I can factor out a three, and be left with two x squared minus three x plus one. On the bottom, I have a GC of, of an x. I can factor that out and get x times x minus one, and now I need to factor out this right here. So I'll do that on the side over here. What I want is factors of my A value times my C value, so 2 times 1. So on factors of 2 that add up to negative 3, that's negative 2, negative 1. From here, you can factor it however you want to because I'm recording this. I'm not sure who's going to watch it if you know how I factor uh, stuff out. But there's something called like the slide and divide method. So what I can do is put it in terms of this negative 2 and 1. So x minus 2, x minus 1. And then I want to divide it by my a value, which is 2. So I divide only these terms by 2. Then I reduce those fractions. So the 2 over 2 over here, that will reduce down to just 1. 
and this one over two does not reduce. So if you have anything left in your denominator, you can take it and put it on the top, and that's what it's going to factor out into. So 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, that's going to factor out to x minus 1 from this right here, and 2x minus 1 from the second one. So I can rewrite this now as 5 over 1 minus 3 times what I just factored out of x minus 1 and 2x minus 1 all over x times x minus 1. Now I need to figure out what's my LCD. So I really have an LCD of 1 here. I don't need to worry about that because it's just a 1. But over here, I have an x and x minus 1. And that's exactly what my LCD is going to be. So I'm going to multiply my 5 over 1 with that LCD. Don't really have much room here, but we're going to multiply with LCD over LCD. So what I end up getting is that 5 multiplied by x and x minus 1 all over x times x minus 1 subtracted by what we just got to be x minus 1. And actually, we're going to start distributing that in as well because we need to expand out the numerators to see or to add like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and start distributing that in. So we get 3x minus 3 multiplied with 2x minus 1. Actually, no, back up. I kind of did this without thinking. We can back this up, make this a lot easier on ourselves. Sorry about that by looking at, at how these x minus 1s cancel out here. That's like the whole point of factoring the top. Sorry about that. We can cancel out these x minus 1s. And the reason we're going to do that is because that makes our LCD a lot simpler. So we'll keep that there. But this right side stays a 1. The right, the uh, This side right here becomes a 3, 2x minus 1 over x. So my LCD actually is just going to be x. So sorry about that. And I'm going to multiply the 5 with x over x. And what I end up getting is 5x over x minus, I can distribute this 3 and now get 6x minus 3 all over x. I can add like terms. Remember, I have to distribute that negative. So it's 5x minus 6x plus 3 all over x, which is just negative x plus 3 all over x. This is number 16. And that's what you should get. My excluded values here, I'm going to look at the term before I cancel anything out. So I'll look at this part right here. And I can see that I have an x right here and an x minus 1. So that tells me that x cannot equal a 0 because of this x. This x says that I cannot equal 0. And this x minus 1 tells me x cannot equal positive 1. So this is my reduced answer. These are my excluded values. Any questions about that? Makes sense. Aubrey, go ahead. Why can't you factor out the negative one and then cancel out the x's? Because you can only cancel out complete factors. So if I try to, so I have this negative x plus three over x. If I try to factor out a negative, what I get is negative 1 times x minus 3 over x, right? This negative 1 is a factor, this x minus 3 is a factor, and this x is a factor. Nothing on the top is the same as the bottom, so I can't cancel anything else. x minus 3 is the whole factor, and that's not the same as x, so that's why they cannot cancel out. Make sense? Yes, thank you. Perfect. All right, let's keep going. Now we're on number 21. Uh, Lena, go ahead. Um, uh, like for the restrictions, uh, don't they only apply to the denominators? Like how did you find that the restrictions were zero and one? So you're right. It only does apply to the, um, the denominator, but it applies to any denominator throughout the whole problem. So, because mm -hmm. what I'm really trying to solve is I'm trying to say, well, five minus this polynomial right here equals what? This polynomial will, equal, will always equal negative x plus 3 over x. 
as long as x is not zero, zero or one, because if x is zero in the beginning, uh, what do I get over here? I get five minus three over what? Um, x. Well, when x is zero. So like when x is zero. Oh, over zero. Over zero, right? And that becomes undefined. So what mm -hmm. you're looking for is what can x not equal or what sets a denominator equal to zero at any time throughout this whole problem? And this x and x minus one gives me a zero in the denominator at x is zero and at x is one. Okay, so you took the factors from the very beginning? Yeah, so I think the best way to think about it is take the factors, not from the beginning, but before you cancel anything else. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Yes. All right, let's keep going. Now we're on number 21. So we're going to skip the word problems. Hopefully that tells you something about the quiz. And we're going to uh, work on this problem. This is a multiplication problem. Multiplication ones, I think, are a lot easier than addition and subtraction. So what I'm going to do is just factor out top and bottom. The top part right here, that's going to factor out to x plus 5, x minus 2, all over that is a GCF of x squared, all times x plus 2, multiplied by x cubed all over, I can factor out an x cubed here, and be left with x plus 5. All right, so typically when I don't forget to do excluded values, this is when I'll do them. I'll do them right at the beginning before I start canceling stuff out and when everything's factored out, because that's kind of where you see your whole denominator because you're never really going to add extra factors to your denominator you're always going to take take away stuff from your denominator at most times so from here my excluded values i can see x cannot be zero because of an x squared here and also this x cubed tells me i cannot be zero either so x cannot be zero x plus two tells me i cannot equal negative two and x plus five tells me i cannot equal negative five so you have to take into account every single factor in the denominator, and that is going to be every single factor. So these right here are all my excluded values. And now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start seeing, well, can I cancel anything out? And if I can, um, what am I left with? So if I look back right here at this part I factored out, on the right side, these x cubes cancel out. And since I'm multiplying it, what I'm essentially doing is just making one big fraction where all these things are being multiplied together. So that means these x plus fives cancel out as well. All right. Um, and that's it. And what we're left with is just even x minus two on the top, all over x squared times x plus two. And that is my final answer. Any questions about that? Makes sense. All right, let's keep, all right, Alden, go ahead. Wait, so why would the x plus fives cancel out? I thought they would multiply each other, the numerator, one of the denominator. Yeah, so remember, it's it's numerator times denominator, right? Yeah. So when I factored everything out, what I have is x plus five times x minus two. Mm -hmm. All over, I'm, I'm just rewriting it x squared x plus two. Oh wait never mind i thought this was division for a second okay, never mind you know that's why yeah i thought this was division for a second Perfect. no never mind cool okay, no, I don't have to worry about that. all right any other questions are we ready to keep going all right let's go on uh 24 now this is a division problem so a division it's pretty much the same thing as multiplication you just have to remember to flip that second fraction or second rational expression, whatever you want to call it. So first thing, I'm always going to start this the same way. Just go ahead and factor everything out. So the left side becomes x plus 2 over x minus 1 divided by x plus 4 all over. That becomes x uh, plus 5, x minus 1. So again, before I start factoring stuff out, I'm going to list out my restricted values or my excluded values, whatever you want to call them. 
So x cannot equal, since this is a division problem, it can't equal anything that will ever be in the denominator. So, so far I have this and I have these in the denominator, right? So it means x cannot equal 1, negative 5, or positive 1 from these three denominators. But because this is a division problem, what I'm going to end up doing is flipping that's this second fraction and making it into a multiplication problem. So now all of a sudden, I also have an x plus 4 in the bottom as well. So x can also not equal negative 4. Arjun, go ahead. So shouldn't x, like, can't, like, why can't x equal negative 5? Because, like, you're going to flip it anyway. So, like, if it was 0 under that, uh, wouldn't it just be multiplying by 0? Well, you're right, but what we're doing, if this denominator is 0, what you're dividing by, you're saying x plus 2 over x minus 1 divided by some undefined function. Like, if I took like, the side by Wouldn't that just be... Wouldn't that just be zero though? Because like you're gonna flip it. Zero and undefined are completely different. What happened? Because what you I, I know, I know. But like, so yeah. if you had zero yeah. under it, right, and then you take the reciprocal to and then multiply it, right? Well, you can't you can't do like that because if I'm dividing something, it's way different than multiplying by its reciprocal. It's, it's still it's 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 there's distinct differences between it. Like if I take this value right here, this is the exact same thing right here, right? Yeah. If I you know we factor it out, obviously we get x plus 4 over x plus 5 over x minus 1, right? Yeah. So when I plug in negative 5 here, I get, ne I get negative 1 all over 0, right? Yes. Which is undefined. Yeah, because like, so you're this, dividing. Yeah, so that means I should be able to replace this with this one at negative 5. But does it make sense if I start saying, well, what's x plus 2 divided by x minus 1 divided by undefined? Does that make sense? I mean, no. No, that's, that's that's exactly why. Because I get where you're coming from, that it's going to end up becoming zero anyway. So why does it matter? Um, and also, it really just matters because what you get is that you divide by zero, you still divide by zero, it's still undefined. So it's kind of overcomplicated, to be honest. Because if you do get zero here, you, you're multiplying by zero, but you, you can't do it because it was a division problem at first. That makes sense. Does that kind of make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why that's why you can't equal zero any part, any any of these three parts right here. Because if I plug in negative five here first, I think, oh, X, uh, I'm getting like, I guess negative five, we can change this too. You get negative five plus two is negative three over negative six divided by some undefined function. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. That's why. Okay. Lena, go ahead. Um, at the top for the restrict restrictions, you wrote one twice. Do we have to um, do that if you keep the first fraction both times? No, you don't. I just didn't realize I put one twice. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing all the other question, because that was your same question. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't realize. All right. So any other questions here before we keep going? Get some more complicated uh, problems. All right, let's keep going. Now I'm number 35. On number 35, we have this big, long thing. So for here, the first thing we always want to do is just kind of factor everything out and see if I can cancel anything out and figure out my, um, my restricted values. So on this left one right here, I have 2 squared plus, or 2t squared plus t minus 6. I'm going to factor that out. So... I want factors of negative 12 to add up to 1. That's going to end up being 4 and negative 3. So same thing. I'm doing my slide and divide thing that I talked about earlier. Divide by your a value. And we end up getting that 2t squared plus t minus 6 is going to end up giving me t plus 2 because it cancels out to 2. This 2 goes in the front. 2t minus 3. All over 4t minus 12, I can factor out a 4 and be left with t minus 3 divided by, I'm going to factor out the top right there. So I'll do this in a different color. So on factors of negative 18, that add up to 7. That's going to be negative, it's going to be positive 9 and negative 2. 
So t plus nine, t minus two. My a value is three. So we end up getting t plus three times three t minus two, because these cancel out. This goes in the front. All over that six t squared minus 12 t minus 18. I can factor out a six and be left with, let's do it over here. I can factor out a six and be left with t squared minus two t minus three. That's gonna factor out to t minus three t plus one. And now we have these two right here to factor out as well. So I guess let's go ahead and do those as well. I'm gonna move all these down first, get some more space. All right. So let's do the top part first. I have three T squared plus four T minus four. We're gonna factor that out. All right, so on factors of negative 12 that add up to four, that's six and negative two, right? Yeah, six and negative two. So I have T plus six, T minus two, divide these by my A value three. And that gives me, they're gonna be multiplying by T plus two times three T minus two, because this cancels out to a two on top and this goes in the front. And now we'll finally do the last one of 2t squared plus 3t minus 9. So factors of negative 18 with 3 gives me 6 and negative 3. So we have t plus 6, t minus 3. My a value is 2, so divide these by 2. These cancel out to leave a 3. This is all over t plus 3. And this 2 goes in the front. 2t minus 3. All right, that's finally all the facts you can go. Everyone with me so far, are we okay? Great. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out all my uh, excluded values. It's kind of best to do it now before you start canceling stuff out. So all my excluded values are going to be where t cannot equal any time it equal, says the denominator equal to 0. So in the first denominator, at 4 times t minus 3. So t cannot equal 3. The second denominator, we'll have a t minus 3 here and there. So three, t still cannot equal 3. I have t plus 1. It cannot equal negative 1. This t plus 3 gives me a negative 3. And this 2t uh, minus 3 gives me a positive 3 over 2. But because in this part, the second purple one right here, because I'm going to be uh, dividing with that one, or what I'm essentially doing is a problem like this, I'm going, to be, I'm going to end up flipping the second fraction. So that means t also cannot equal this negative 3, which I already have anyway, and this 3t plus minus 2, which gives me a positive 2 thirds. All right, everyone with me so far? Numbers of 35. All right, so we're just going to keep working this out now. So I'm going to solve this out. So first thing I'm going to do is flip the second one. And I get t plus 2 times 2t two minus 3 all over 4 times t minus 3. Now it's going to be a multiplication problem. When I flip these, I get 6t minus 3t plus 1 all over t plus 3, 3t three minus 2. Right? And all this multipl multiplied by this junk right here. T plus 2, 3t minus 2 all over t plus 3 and 2t minus 3. So I'll multiply these two together first. And when you, when you do, all you're really doing is kind of reducing stuff out from top and bottom. So what cancels out? I think I'm missing something. So t minus 3s cancel out. And the 6 and 4 can reduce down to a 3 and a 2. So what I end up getting when I multiply just these two together is t plus 2 times 2t minus 3 all over 2 
times this part right here of t plus three, three t minus two. And now on the top right here, I'm gonna bring this t plus one over as well. These are all being multiplied together. All that multiplied by this part, I haven't uh, messed with yet. So t plus two, three t minus two, all over t plus three, and 2t minus 3. All right. So same thing. I'm multiplying these together. So I'm going to see, well, what can I cancel out from top and bottom? 3t uh, minus 2s cancel out. 2t minus 3s cancel out. And it looks like that's it. Unless I'm, I'm blind. I'm missing something. So what we're left with is t plus 2 t plus 1, well, t plus 2 squared, all over, oh, I forgot about the 3. Okay, don't be like me. Don't forget about this 3 we, we factored out. So there's still 3 here. And on the bottom, we have this 2 times 2 plus 3, all squared. So I think this is supposed to be 35, but I'm not sure. It might be, it might be different on your key, whatever you have. Um, but that's what I got, and that's what the key says as well. And is there any questions about this problem, how I did that? It's kind of a long problem, mainly because of the factoring. Just don't forget about your excluded values. Don't forget about canceling, bringing down those those constants like I did. Alden, go ahead. So on one of the warm-ups, you showed some excluded values that at first, we're part of the equation, and then we could just take them. We took them out later because they were invalid. Is are we gonna? Uh, how do we know if it's not going? If the excluded values are going to be like set in stone that aren't gonna? We can't just like cross them out later on. Um. Do you remember what day that was? I didn't pull up the warm ups. I don't remember that being a warm up. Was it? Was it before this module? Module nine. No, I don't think so. I think we talked. I think we talked about it after class. I was asking you about it is why I'm concerned was now. It, was it a warm up problem or was it something we talked about after class? Because if it's ever in the denominator at any point, it has to be excluded value. I I think it was a warm up, but I don't know. So we're so the basically the excluded values are always going to be set in stone once we find them at the beginning. Usually, I don't like saying it like that. I don't like having because uh, there's not really a lot of stuff that's definitive in math. It's always going to depend on the problem, um, but it, what it's going to be is that, is that any if if it's if you ever if it ever sets any denominator equal to zero at any point throughout the problem, it's going to end up it's going to be an excluded value. But typically, where that happens in the problems that we've done, so actually up to the problems we've done so far, so up to this problem of thirty on on my screen it says thirty five, up to here all we really had to do was factor it down, and before you cancel anything out whatever is going to become a denominator is going to end up being your, your excluded values. But, you know, a division, obviously, you have to worry about the numerator for that one as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem we're going to do next, these ugly fractions on fraction things, you have to look at the denominators of the small fractions and the bigger ones. But there is an easier way to, to kind of see what the excluded values of those are going to be. And we'll t I'll talk about it in a bit once we get to that problem. I'm just trying to figure out what the warm-up problem we talked about was. Was it like the... A plus A over B plus C over D. Honestly, I don't remember. I just remember being confused. Okay. Um, I don't know. If I'll, me, I'll just try to. I'll just try to find. It. I'll tell you about it if I find yeah, it. Try to find it. T t ask me about it tomorrow because the quiz is on Tuesday anyway, so we have some time. Um, we can we can try to find it ourselves. All right. Okay. All right. Any other questions about this problem before we move on? All right, let's go on to number six, or 32, problem, the sixth problem we're doing. So for this one, these are those really ugly fraction on fraction ones, and there's going to be two ways to solve it. You can either kind of think about each, each part on the top and bottom as their own things and solve them out that way, or you can find the LCD of all four fractions and um, find the LCD of all four fractions and then cancel it out and get rid of the denominators. I guess I'll go over both ways. So let me go ahead and duplicate this page. Can I do that? That's not true. 
and we'll go over both ways. So the first way is going to be the way that I like to do it. I just like to find the LCD of the whole thing and cancel out the denominators right away because I just don't like seeing fractions on top. I don't want to get rid of it as soon as possible. So the LCD here, if I look at all four of these right here, I have an X, I have, I have X's and Y's, right? So if I compare all the X's, the highest degree X I see is an X to the fourth. So that goes in my LCD. So when I take into account all the factors of X's, the highest degree is what goes in my LCD. So X to the fourth goes in my LCD. My next factor that I see in my, in my denominator is a Y. So I compare all the Y's together and the highest degree of all the Y's is a Y cubed. So that means Y cubed goes in your LCD. All right, so that's what my LCD is gonna be. So I'm gonna multiply the whole top and the whole bottom by the LCD of X to the fourth, Y to the third. So what I get when I distribute this n to each kind of half of this big fraction, this big fraction, is on the top I have six multiplied by my LCD of x to the fourth y cubed, all over x squared y squared minus six times that LCD of x to the fourth y cubed, all of that over x cubed y, and all of this is going to be over what I get when I distribute this into the bottom as well. So I have a 2 multiplied by x to the fourth y cubed all over x squared y squared. And then for the second one, it will be subtracted by 2 multiplied by the LCD again of x to the fourth y cubed all over x squared y cubed. And it looks like I copied something down. This bottom part should have been x to the fourth y. There we go. Are we good so far? Any questions, are we good? Great. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start canceling out these factors on top and bottom. Um, so this x squared cancels out with this x squared to leave me with an x squared on top. The y squared will cancel out to leave me with a y on top. The x cubed and the x cancel out to leave me an x on top. The y and the y cubed cancel out to leave a y squared on top. On the bottom, x to the fourth completely cancel out. These cancel out and leave a y squared. The x's cancel out and leave an x squared on top. The y cubes completely cancel out. And that's all going to equal the top. All I'm left with is 6x squared y. All minus by 6xy squared. All this over what's left in the bottom is 2y squared minus 2x squared. And this is what it should look like once you multiply everything by the LCD of all the little mini fractions, right? Because the whole point of multiplying the whole, this whole thing by your LCD is to cancel out all these numerators that we have. When you multiply a bunch of fractions by their LCDs, the denominator completely cancels out. And that's what we're taking advantage of. I'm doing it to kind of get one regular fraction rather than, you know, fractions inside of a big fraction. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and simplify this out, see what I can do. So here I can factor out a six. And when I factor out a six on the top, I get six times, or I can factor out a six X. I get six X and I'm left with three, six X Y, wow, keep forgetting stuff. Six X Y, that's what we factor out. And what I'm left with is an X minus Y. Doing that right? All over the bottom, I can factor out a 2. And I'm left with y squared minus x squared. So these, these cancel out. Let's do a different color. These cancel out and leave with a 3 on top. And that's going to equal 3xy times x minus y on bottom, y squared minus, uh, y squared minus x squared. I can rewrite that as y minus x 
y plus x and I can rewrite this one right here. I can rewrite that. So I can factor out a negative here and get three x y times x minus y all over. I can factor out a negative here and be left with negative y plus x or x minus y times y plus x. And then I can cancel these out. So sometimes you could play around with these equations to get what you want. And that's what I got. Let me see if that's what, yep. And that's what I got and that's what the answer is gonna be. We didn't get our excluded values so I kind of forgot about those. We'll go, we're gonna go back and look at it. But solving up to here, are we okay with that? Any questions about that, what I did by getting this final reduced answer? Should we not put the negative on the numerator? Should we not like put it up there? Multiply by negatives? I mean, you could. It doesn't it's the same thing? It's probably better actually for me to put it on the top. But I know me personally, I'm not going to be. I'm not super picky about that. So I guess you could, if you really wanted to, rewrite this as negative three x y over even x plus y would be more proper anyway, because you want it in alphabetical order. But I, I, me, I don't know about Mr. Stevens or Miss Winfield, but I personally wouldn't take points off if you left it the way I did right here. I'll be fine with your way because it's saying the same thing to me. Mm, okay. All right. I guess you're my student anyway, Alden, so it doesn't matter. All right. So let's go back and figure out my excluded values because I keep forgetting about those. So I have two variables, x and y, so I'm going to look at both of those. So when I look at excluded values, I'm going to look at every single denominator that I get. So the denominators that I have, I have a denominator right here, 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 and here. And those are pretty straightforward, right? X and Y just can't equal zero because they're just factors of just X and just Y. So those little mini ones, I can see right away that X cannot equal zero and Y cannot equal zero. But the problem with these little big fractions, like little fractions inside of big fractions, is that I also have a big, uh, I also have a big denominator right here. Like this part I'm boxing off right here. That whole thing is also a denominator. So I need to figure out, well, when does 2 over x to the fourth y minus 2 over x squared y cubed, when does all that equal 0? And the good thing here is that when you simplify these down, whichever method you use, the method I use right here, or the method we'll go over in a bit, when you get to this point right here, when you're left with just one big denominator on the bottom, that right here is going to tell you your other excluded value. This will tell you when this box off red part equals zero because these are the exact same thing. They're similar. So I can set this 2y squared minus 2x squared equal to zero. 2y squared minus 2x squared. When that equals zero, I get 2y squared equals 2x squared or just really just going to be y squared equals x squared or y equals x. So I guess we need to say it doesn't equal. So y can also not equal x positive or negative x because of the square roots. So I'll just go ahead and show that actually. So we get y squared cannot equal x squared. Take the square root of both sides. Y cannot equal plus or minus x. So that's your other excluded value. Any questions about that? Uh, will there be a question this long on the quiz? That was a while ago. And on, are you talking about this problem we just did right now or the one previous? The previous one. Um, could you have something that long? Um, yeah, you, you, yeah, definitely. I can, yeah, definitely have something that long. Maybe maybe not so long that all the other, like, you have like six different things to factor out, but you will have something similar to that where you have to divide and multiply or multiply and divide or add and whatever it is. But probably not but probably not something so long where you have to factor, you know, like five different things out at once. Lena, go ahead. Um, I know there's a difference between like when there's a subtraction sign and a plus sign. Um, like this one, number 32, has a subtraction. 
So you're able to cancel. If it's a plus sign, are you not able to cancel any of those um, factors? Like right, what I did here in red, this part? Yes. So it doesn't matter if I subtraction or addition in the middle because what I cancel is top and bottom of the same fraction right here. So mm -hmm. when I, I, took this, I took this LCD and distributed it into each of these. So I took the X to the fourth Y cubed and put it to the top here and the top here and same thing in the bottom, right? This green part is when I, when I multiplied in my LCD and then I just canceled from top and bottom. I didn't worry about the subtraction sign until I got to this part right here. At this part right here, that's why I started worrying about, well, I said subtraction, I said subtract stuff out and actually kind of think about it. Before I get to this simple, more simple fraction, all I really worried about was getting rid of that, that, that denominator inside of each fraction, right? I didn't want to see four mini fractions inside of a big one. I'd rather see one regular fraction. So I worried about getting rid of the LCD out of all four of these fractions to have just one regular looking fraction. I don't know if that so makes sense. Does it make sense? Sorry. Yeah. For the very simplified like fraction, if you did have addition signs, you could not, um, could you not cancel further? Right here? Yes. Is there addition? Well, we yes. did cancel further, didn't we? Because we factored stuff out, right? So at the top mm -hmm. right here is a GCF of 6XY. So I factored that out. And I was like able to cancel that out with a 2. And then the bottom factors out to Y minus X, Y plus X. And this y minus x, we can kind of manipulate it a bit to put it as x minus y to cancel those out as well. Okay, so the sign doesn't really um, contribute to the canceling. This it doesn't. I don't. I don't want to say that because if this is a mm -hmm. plus sign, the, the answer would be different. It's more mm -hmm. just. It doesn't matter if it's a negative or a positive sign. If it cancels, it can cancel. Uh, you just have to factor it out. What determines if you can factor something out is if it's being multiplied or not. It's a factor. In factors are self being multiplied okay. together. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions about this problem before we move on? Are we good with how we got these restricted values? All right. Let's go ahead and look at the other way to solve this problem. And the other way to solve this problem is to kind of look at top and bottom individually and kind of solving those out. So if I look at, so if I look at the top part right here, I have an x squared y squared and an x cubed y. So if I multiply this right here, the left one with x over x, and this right one with y over y, what I end up getting is 6x over x cubed y squared minus 6y over x cubed y squared and all this over this i'm gonna do the same thing in the bottom as well so i have two over x to the fourth y and two over x squared y cubed well on this left part if i multiply top and bottom with a y squared over y squared and this right side by an x squared over x squared what i get is two y squared I get a two y squared all over x to the fourth y cubed minus two x squared over x to the fourth y cubed. And the reason we're doing all this is so these denominator, these those denominators match, and that these denominators match. So I can combine these, and what I get on the top is. 6x minus 6y all over, actually, I'm going to move to the bottom, giving you a little more room. What I end up getting is 6x minus 6y all over x cubed y squared. That's the whole top part. And now the bottom part, or what I'm dividing by, ends up becoming 2y squared minus 2x squared all over that denominator of x to the fourth y cubed. So that's what I get. So before I go any further, I'm going to factor this out because uh, you can still factor stuff out a little more from here. And what I end up getting is on the top right here, I can factor out a 6 and be left with 6 times x minus y all over x cubed y squared divided by, I can factor out a 2 here and be left with 
y squared minus x squared all over x to the fourth y cubed. So from here, now everything's factored out. I can figure out my, my excluded values uh, or my restrictions. So I can see that, well, my x cannot equal zero because I have an x cubed. So x cannot equal zero. Also know y cannot equal zero. And then I have another x right here that I don't really need to worry about because I already have an x doesn't equal zero. And y cubed as well already took an account of zero. Y cannot equal zero. I don't need to put it twice. But remember, because um, it's a division problem, I need to take an account the numerator as well. So the numerator says that y squared minus x squared cannot equal zero because that's going to end up becoming a denominator. So I can solve this for x. We, uh, we already kind of did this, and we saw that y cannot equal plus or minus x. Right, we, we did that same exact problem in the previous page, and we saw that y cannot equal plus or minus x. And these are gonna be my uh, restrictions or my excluded values. Are we good here? Aubrey, go ahead. So when you have the y cannot equal plus or minus x, that also means that x cannot equal plus or minus y, right? Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't need to put it twice because it's, it's like saying x cannot equal zero, then zero cannot equal x. It's, you're saying the same thing. You don't need to say it like two different ways. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to flip this second uh, divisor or second fraction. And when I do, what I get is 6x minus y over x cubed y squared is now multiplied by x to the fourth y cubed all over 2. Well, this y squared minus x squared factors out to y minus x, y plus x. I guess I should have factored that on the previous page, the previous step, I mean, and we would have saw that. Anyway, this is what we get. So x to the cubed and x to the fourth cancel out to leave an x on top. y squared and y cubed cancel out to leave a y on top. The six and the two cancel out, leave a three and a one on the bottom. So from here, I have x, y multiplied by x, y all over this y minus x times y plus x. But remember, this y minus x, I can factor out a negative or the three, don't, don't get a constant, the three. I can factor out a negative there. Right here, again, negative of negative y plus x or just x minus y times y plus x or x plus y, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. These cancel out. And what I'm left with is 3xy. I guess put the negative on top if you really want to, all over y plus x. The exact same thing. Just two different methods to go about the same problem. Whichever method you use, we don't care. We're not going to say use this method over that method because they're the same exact thing. It's whatever, it's whatever method you like. Any questions about that? All right. If not, that's all the problems I had set up for you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask, and we will go over. And this video has been recording, so I'm going to be posting it on YouTube. Uh, no problem, Ajay. I'll see you tomorrow, man. Um, I'll be posting this on YouTube, so y'all can always rewatch it if you want to to get ready for the quiz on Tuesday. You as well, Aubrey. Have a nice night.
All right, well, I'm here till eight, guys. So feel free to ask questions anytime you want to, and we will go over them. <clears throat> Sam, I don't know if you're saying anything, but you unmuted yourself, but your mic's not working. I guess we can go ahead and just stop the recording here. There's no point in it.